This video is brought to you by NordVPN. With the 2005 revival of Doctor Who, there was a new focus on the companion, especially focusing on the companion's family. In series 1 and 2 there was a big focus on Rose's family, with them being the centre of a lot of stories. However, Rose left at the end of series 2, replaced by Martha Jones, who came with her own family for the show to explore. Even though they would have less of a focus as Rose's family, showrunner Russell T Davies was keen to have a mid-series episode, featuring Martha's family prominently to explore them further than the opening episode did. He asked writer Stephen Greenhorn to implement this family-based element into a working script inspired by supervillain origin stories, particularly Spider-Man's nemesis Dr. Octopus. This story would become the Lazarus Experiment, where an aging professor develops a machine that makes him a young man once again, but at a monstrous cost. It's a story that seems to have often been kind of forgotten about by fans, so does it hold up all these years later, even if the CGI I doesn't. I am 76 years old and I am reborn! I like how the Lazarus experiment starts. For once, the cold open isn't someone getting killed or anything like that. It's the Doctor and Martha returning to present day Earth, with the Doctor taking her home. It's the conclusion to the mini arc of Martha's one trip in the TARDIS, which began in Smith and Jones. It keeps continuity with the Doctor's promise, since he stretched the one trip idea for the last two stories, now bringing her home. You feel bad for Martha since she rightfully feels cheated just being dumped back home after all of these adventures, and the Doctor continues to be dismissive, not understanding why she's upset about it. It's unfair to her and he acts like he's in the right to do it. It's great that he comes back, but he only does it because they happen to catch 5 seconds of a news broadcast, rather than a conscious decision or realisation he's in the wrong. It's just luck. The news broadcast in question is Professor Lazarus claiming he will change what it means to be human, which is a great way to to set up the episode. It's a good line that creates a lot of intrigue. The Doctor and Martha go to the black tie event launch of the machine, with a nice reference back to the Series 2 Cyberman two-parter, as he mentions how bad things happen when he wears his tuxedo. I think it's a nice callback. I do like that Martha's sister Tish is the main conduit for them attending the event, along with serving as the direct connection to the project, as she is head of PR, so she set up the whole event. It's a good way to explore the world and use Martha's family effectively for the story, giving us a good insight into her family. Similarly, Martha's mum Francine is used interestingly here. People have issues with her, but I think she plays the concerned mother role well. Her immediate distrust of the Doctor is relatable for anyone in a tight-knit family, since he's just appeared without Martha ever mentioning him until this point. It's also a good way to show his spontaneous nature, because he just appears in people's lives with no explanation, so it's nice to see how that's perceived by outsiders because it didn't really get explored much with Jackie in Series 1. It's a nice touch that the Doctor still doesn't really know how to deal with families, carrying over that awkwardness from the Ninth Doctor and mismanaging the situation, since he's still not used to the domestic side of things. But this episode is about the eponymous Lazarus experiment, not social mingling at a black tie event. We soon get Lazarus himself arriving, giving a little speech before entering the machine. It's a very sci-fi setup and in classic Doctor Who fashion the machine starts to overload, forcing the Doctor into action. I think it's a great scene, showing how alert the Doctor is and ready for action at a moment's notice. The machine opens up and reveals that Lazarus has been transformed into a horrifying monster, Mark Gatiss. Jokes aside, I like the reveal of Lazarus being younger. It's a powerful moment, but you know it's wrong since the Doctor is clearly disgusted by it. Him confronting Lazarus and Lady Thor is a good scene, because it shows both the Doctor's scientific knowledge and strict moral code, deeply disagreeing with Lazarus. This isn't about improving, this is about you and your customers living a little longer. The Doctor and Lazarus are actually fairly similar, which gets explored later in the episode, but the parallels are drawn early on, as Lazarus recalls what the Second World War was like and how it scared him, driving him to do this. 
you can easily relate it to the time war which the Doctor was involved in and also scared of. It's a good narrative decision to have the Doctor and Martha examine Lazarus' DNA since there are labs in the building. It also reminds you of his days as the third Doctor, running experiments for UNIT and spending a lot of time looking into microscopes. The Doctor and Martha find out that the DNA is quickly changing and mutating, which is a good way to clue them into the mystery because they already expected there to be something wrong with all of this. Then, as the audience, we get a good idea of the mutation, because Lazarus starts spasming on the floor with bone crunching noises as the monster tears its way out of him. It's delightfully creepy body horror. He's shown to be a vicious killer because Lady Thor is found as just a withered skeletal corpse. Much like the DNA, it helps our protagonists work out what's happening, rather than being unaware. It leads to them chasing Lazarus throughout the story, nicely subverting the usual format. The eventual reveal of the monster is great and it looks really creepy and monstrous, but it doesn't hold up very well all of these years later, which is a huge shame. You can tell what they were going for though and it probably looked great in 2007. The chase scene is good, finally injecting some much needed energy into this badly paced episode. There's some fun chaos as Lazarus crashes the party and kills a woman, which cements him as a threat, especially because he then tries to kill Francine and Leo. During this scene, Martha really shows her independence and adaptability. She opens opens the doors to get everyone out of the building and also uses her medical knowledge to work out that Leo has a concussion and treat it. It shows her value as a companion, quick thinking and practical. It really plays to her strengths and she chooses to leave her family to go and help the doctor, showing how she's become used to these adventures. It's similar to when Rose leaves Mickey behind in Boomtown. Martha may be quick thinking and practical but do you know what's even more practical? NordVPN! Now if you've spent as much time on YouTube as I have, you'll probably have heard of this service. Service. But there's a good reason why. NordVPN is the most secure and powerful VPN out there. When you really think about it, the internet is like Professor Lazarus. It's all nice and charming on the surface, but underneath it's a vicious monster. No one likes to be tracked or watched online, so Nord is like the doctor for the internet, allowing you to keep your sensitive data safe. Without a VPN, your information is wide out in the open and unsecured, especially if you're using public Wi-Fi. But with a VPN, you can keep it masked and protect from anyone trying to steal it. Not only does Nord keep you safe online, but it also allows you to trick websites into thinking you're in entirely different countries. I always get comments from international viewers asking how they can watch British shows like Doctor Who or Inside Number 9. Well with Nord you can just set your location to the UK and you'll be able to watch them on Netflix. It's as simple as that. It's like having your very own online TARDIS, travelling all over the world without moving a muscle, which is especially handy if you need to bypass internet censorship. One of Nord Nord's other specialities. Personally, I've been using Nord myself for a couple of years now and it's well worth getting because it's so useful and gives you some real peace of mind. You can get two years of NordVPN now for just £2.86 a month by going to www.nordvpn.com forward slash harbo. You'll even get an additional month completely free. It's honestly a great deal that allows you to get so much more out of the internet. So a big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Now, Back to the review. I think the fake out climax of the episode is well executed. The Doctor knows that Lazarus won't destroy the machine, so he and Martha get inside, only to realise they're trapped and put in danger in a claustrophobic and intense scene as Lazarus turns the machine on. But it's okay though because the Doctor spouts some techno babble and reverses the polarity to stop the machine and kill Lazarus. It feels final, albeit rushed, and Lazarus gets taken away, so you think, oh okay, that's it then bit sudden, but okay. But then we get the good reveal that Lazarus is still alive and has killed the paramedics, fleeing to the cathedral he mentioned earlier in the episode, where he used to shelter from the Blitz. The part in the cathedral is really well directed and shot. It honestly looks better and feels more interesting than the episode before this point. The story also seems to finally really get going during this final act, which is a shame because it's taken so long. The Doctor faces off with Lazarus once again, continuing their confrontation from earlier. The earlier confrontation took place on a rooftop as Lazarus tries to justify his experiment and the doctor shutting him down with a great line about living. Some people live more in 20 years than others do in 80. It's not the time that matters, it's the person. 
Even though the Doctor rejuvenates himself, he knows it's wrong that Lazarus is doing it, and suggests it's a curse. This is revisited in the Cathedral, since they once again discuss the limited human lifespan. It's similar to the beginning of Evolution of the Daleks, because Lazarus, much like Dalek Sek, misunderstands what humanity is about. Lazarus is the perfect foil for the Doctor, since it allows us to explore the consequences of immortality, as the Doctor explains how it's a curse, forcing you to watch everything around you die. It's a good use of his age and regenerative ability to explore Lazarus wanting to be immortal. I think it's a shame we didn't get more of this exploration throughout. The episode then actually climaxes with Martha using herself as bait to draw Lazarus up to the clock tower. Her taking the initiative and choosing to do this really shows how she is changing and gaining confidence in herself because she's now brave enough to draw a huge creepy scorpion monster to chase her into a dead end. She puts herself in front of Tish to protect her sister and sacrifice herself if need be, showing a real fearlessness that continues to develop throughout the series, especially because she begs Tish to trust the Doctor, which is a recurring concept that pays off big time in the series finale. And as usual, the Doctor does save the day, but in an unusual way, playing an organ to make Lazarus fall from the tower. It's a bit out of nowhere, but it does the job and the Spinal Tap reference makes it worth it. The post action is shorter than usual, but it's nice. There's an especially good moment where Tish asks Martha who the Doctor is, with Martha struggling to answer it, simply replying, He's the Doctor. It sums up how impossible it is to define the Doctor, because the character is so much all at once and means something different to everyone. The episode then comes full circle, ending with the Doctor and Martha by the TARDIS in her room, just like it started. This time, however, he offers her another trip, but in an interesting twist, she says no, because she objects to how he's treating her. She stands her ground and shows her backbone, not wanting to just be a rebound or passenger. It shows her inner strength and conviction, since she takes the risk of never travelling in the TARDIS again, choosing her morals and happiness over the thrill of adventure, making the Doctor consciously accept her for who she is, instead of the beginning where he came back by chance. One of the most important aspects of this episode is that it's a law building episode. It's the most significant episode for setting up the Mr. Saxon storyline, which had previously just been some Bad Wolf style background lines. This initially starts off the same here, with Lazarus and Lady Thor talking about Mr. Saxon's involvement in the project. Much like the past two arcs, it gives you a sense that there's something bigger going on here. But this really kicks up a gear when Francine gets approached by a mysterious man. No, seriously, that's what he's credited as. He just appears, accompanied by a sinister musical cue that tells you he's up to no good. He really feels sinister and conniving. He feeds her distrust of the Doctor by hinting at the Doctor being dangerous, later reappearing and playing on her insecurities once again, whispering in her ear like worm tongue and heightening her paranoia. It plays into the ending because because the episode ends on Francine leaving a message on Martha's phone, telling Martha she isn't safe, and that the Doctor is actually dangerous because she's been told information directly from Harold Saxon. The name drop once again brings your attention to the story arc, and makes you aware of its importance. It's a good subplot to the episode, and I think it builds intrigue very well. The Lazarus Experiment is a very interesting episode because it's kind of weird. There's simultaneously a lot going on and not much going on at the same time. The pacing is so often strange, highlighted by the complete tonal and narrative shift for the last 12 minutes. It's not that Doctor Who needs constant action to be interesting, it just feels like the action in this episode is timed badly, coming at the wrong moments. It feels like they spent too much time setting everything up, and then the middle is a bit of a chaotic mess, before the story ends on a strong note. I can't help but feel like they should have focused a lot more on the philosophy of the experiment, and the parallels with the Doctor. It feels underexplored, which probably stems from the confusing pacing. Even though he acted in it, rather than writing it, it feels like a very Mark Gatiss episode, with strange decisions and interesting ideas going undeveloped. That being said, all of the acting is done very well, with David Tennant in top form, especially during his excellent confrontations with Gatiss throughout, since their two characters play off each other very well. The monster itself is very well designed and looks creepy, but it wasn't exactly future-proofed, meaning it, rather ironically, shows its age. I think I would probably give The Lazarus Experiment a C on the Series 3 tier list. It's a solid episode, even great in some aspects, but it's kind of like, 
Coldplay. It's a bit bland and you'd have an alright time if you came across it, but you really wouldn't go searching for it. It's the better side of average, but it's still average. It builds up the world well and adds a lot of depth to the Mr. Saxon story arc, along with doing a good job of exploring Martha's family and developing her as a companion. It does a great job in both of these aspects, but there's just something about the episode that feels uneventful and forgettable. I can't help but feel like they should have spent more time with a cathedral setting, because once you get to that part of the episode everything becomes more interesting and special. It just feels like a missed opportunity, but the next episode will be much better, right? Oh wait. Oh no. He's coming. And I'd like to give a special thank you to my gold level patrons, Stefan McNever Miller and Mark Hippold Guy Taylor. Thank you a lot for your support.